Yeah, where are we supposed to look? Oh, we look at you. We're talking. We're talking. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking here. Love it. <laughs> How do you say your last name? Hebert. Everybody, welcome to Soapbox. My name is Mauro Di Pasquale. I'm the executive director here at WCCA TV 13, the People's Channel. Now, without further ado, I need to talk about this this uh, this organization. It's called Love 146, and <clears throat> they work toward the abolition uh, toward the abolition of child sex trafficking and exploitation uh, through advocacy and, and prevention and aftercare. And we're going to learn about this organization. We're going to meet uh, one of the founders and two of the uh, participants with the organization. And uh, we really hope you watch this because it's something that really impacts you and it's something that you also can participate. And I sincerely hope that by the end of this program, you're going to turn uh, to yourself and say, I, I want to be an abolitionist and help Love 146 as well. Uh, so joining me, we have the founder of Love 146. Uh, we have Lamont uh, Hebert. Thanks for being here, Lamont. Thanks very we much. We have Kathy Maskell. And you might have seen Kathy recently uh, mm -hmm. doing a presentation at Holy Cross, which we presented on WCCA as well. And Abigail Shiga. OK, <laughs> good. I, you know, I see the, the Z and the S together, and, and it, it, it throws me. So Shiga. 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 Thank you for being here. I think most people understand prostitution as you know, the world's yeah, oldest, like the oldest profession. Yeah, it's the oldest profession, right, yeah. But when I, when I hear people say that, what gets to me is, you know, just because something has existed for a long time, is that what makes it permissible? Is that justification for it? And what we're talking about here are children. You know, Lamont said in this particular brothel, they saw children as young as nine. And in some of our partner safe homes in Southeast Asia, there have been children as young as three who have been rescued. And so when you hear, oh, it's the world's oldest profession, does that <coughs> justify, does that give any allowance for children to be um, exploited in this manner? And we have made a very clear yeah. <laughs> judgment on that, yeah. saying yeah. absolutely not. It's actually worse than cattle in some places, mm -hmm. right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's terrible. Mm -hmm. yeah, but we're talking as well about people who are taken from their homes, children who are forcibly taken to be used in that manner as well. It's not, so. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. right. It's not at all consensual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. <coughs> no. Can a five-year-old consent yeah, to, right. to anything? <laughs> yeah. So these kids are, are stolen from mm -hmm. homes or abducted? Tricked, and, coerced. So the, the coercion and, and the lies. Unfortunately, there's just so much money to be made. Mm -hmm. um, as the experts have, have, have said, um, even the US State Department, they said that human trafficking now uh, generates more money than the illegal sale of arms. And within the next 10 years, it will be making more money than the illegal drug trade uh, because a drug is used once where a woman or child can be used over and over again. And it's a free commodity. You can have children, you can keep having children, you have to physically mm. make drugs and manufacture it, so. Yeah, they, they have plenty of resources that they can just basically steal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's, it, this happened when we, we did it, we met with you folks mm -hmm. a few months ago, and as you start talking about it, you, you know, it becomes an overwhelming, I can't even ask questions, you know. <laughs> you get to the point where, uh, you see how horrific this whole situation is, yeah. and it seems overwhelming. How do you deal with that? I mean, it's like an overwhelming task you have mm -hmm. uh, committed yourselves to. Yeah. And, and how do you even, what's the first thing you do? I mean, it's, it's got to be. Focus on the one. Yeah. Focus on the one child that you, can, even, that you have made a difference to and that you can make a difference to, and then you see that there's more than one. Yeah. And that's it. For me, anyway, I mean, I know that we all feel pretty much the same. If you look at the global issue, it can be so overwhelming that you feel like there's no way I can make a difference in this, mm -hmm. and so people don't even want to try. It's like chipping away at an iceberg. But we've all met. We've all seen it. We've all been there firsthand and seen and met and played with children who have been directly affected by, by what we and other organizations do to make their lives better once they come out of this situation. And also met with people who have... Um, 
you know, been part of the prevention projects where they may have lost a child to this and mm -hmm. because of the information that we put out um, haven't fallen prey to it. So when you see that face to face and you look in somebody's eyes and you have a conversation and then you have a little girl of six or seven <laughs> hanging on to you and, you know, making bracelets. When I went out there we took bracelets and we made bracelets and they're all, you know, that, that's it. That's that moment of like there's 30 children in one room that, that would otherwise be being abused at that moment, you know, that's how, that's how you do it when it's such an overwhelming problem. I mean, is it just something that happens in, in Asia and, and mm -hmm. different parts of the world, or does it affect us here in, in Worcester, Massachusetts, or in, you know, the United States even? Yeah, I, every, I think virtually every country in the world that has people <laughs> living yeah. in it uh, is affected. And in, in terms of the United States, the U.S. State Department has minimum estimates that as minimum 17,000 people, men, women, and children, are trafficked into the United States every year. And there's two reasons why people are, are sold and trafficked. It's either for forced labor purposes or for um, sexual exploitation. Mm -hmm. M women, men, and children forced into prostitution or even working in strip clubs. Um, you Just last in? year in, in our own town, um, literally a mile away from where we live, uh, there was a yeah. massage parlor was raided and underneath it they found a whole bunch of, um, of illegal immigrants who've been, well, not, then I can't call them immigrants if they're trafficked in. <laughs> but um, yeah. yeah, people who have so been brought in. Sex and slaves. It's, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and they're a mile away from where I live. It's, it's, it's happening all around, and it also happens with, in, with Americans too. I mean, we have just the stories coming out now um, that it's becoming a, a, a greater problem here with runaways and with children on the street. It's starting mm -hmm. to happen here much more. Um, so it's not just confined to, to Asia and places where people don't even mm -hmm. want to think, oh, it's not on my doorstep. Mm -hmm. Which I don't, I don't like that whole concept anyway. We're in the whole world together. It is our doorstep, but I don't want to get on the soapbox about that. <laughs> but, um, but it is. It's happening all around. You know, it's mm -hmm. not. Um, yeah. It's not an isolated phenomenon. What's Love One Forty Six? I mean, obviously, you can't do this with one organization. You need to create networks. Yeah. You're dealing with, you know, underground organized crime here. So, it's which is a vast network, I'm sure, and. You also have to counter that with a network and with many partnerships. Do you are you working on that? Do you have other partners that you could share? Yeah, lots. I was um, recently in um, in Cambodia and Thailand and met with um, several of our partner organizations who are on the ground in there doing it. And um, you know they, they they put their life on the line every single day. We have one particular gentleman who who's, um, runs a big one of our prevention projects who's taken it on his own hands just to drive up into the hills of Cambodia and educate a lot of the hill tribes up there, which is where a lot of the forced coercion comes from as far as the children being exploited. Um, a lot of these, these people are very isolated in their communities and have no idea um, that when a stranger comes in and says that they'll give their child a job, give their daughter a job in a shoe store or in a coffee shop, that actually they don't exist and they're going to be taken and, and you know, beaten and raped and then sold for prostitution. So we have this, um, this tier system where um, the village leaders will come together, we'll educate them in what's going on and then they'll all go off and find villages in their own area, bring everybody together and then the, so the education continues in this pyramid system and what was the last estimated, how many we've reached? It was thousands, wasn't it? When I was there yeah. it, was, it was in that couple of thousands of, of, of individual tribes and villages that we were able to, to reach mm -hmm. in this manner and that's just one of the prevention projects. Um, we, I also um, went through um, one of the slum areas in Phnom Penh um, where it's estimated that 80% of families in there have sold at least one child to prostitution. Um, and that place was just, it was hell on earth. I, I, we could do a whole show just talking about the horrors that I witnessed yeah, within this know, one place that people call at home, you know. Yeah. I'm in Phnom Penh, we are um, we're in a Vietnamese slum area in Cambodia. garbage heap. Um, we just came from a project where we're trying to take the children from here and educate them. This is one of the most trafficked places. Oh, it's just so hard.
They're going to demolish this slum for what it's worth. This is the, people are going to be displaced. It's a slum, but it's their home. I don't know what they're, what's going to happen to them. But you know, you say somebody, they sell mm -hmm. this child. And I'm sitting here thinking, how can anybody do that? Well, but, yeah, that was I, I don't want questions. to be judgmental. To, to yeah, know. it's different. You see, we're here. We have everything in, in, in America. Obviously, I'm from Great Britain. It's the same over there. We think we have problems. And yes, there are a lot of working poor. And we do have an incredible amount of poverty over here. But we'll never know what, what it's like in, in other countries until you, you, you can't know until you go there. I mean, you, we've all been, we've all, see, we've all seen it. Um, you, the, the particular slum that I went to was, it was like a garbage heap with, it was it an was old, dump, so. it was a dump, yeah. it was an old yeah. derelict, it looked like a completely burnt down set of apartments that were in, uninhabitable and then amongst it was just like trash, two, three feet high and barbed wire where they, when they move one family they put this big mound of barbed wire in because they're trying, the government's trying to clean out this area and, and move them. In a place like that, where most of these people are actually Vietnamese as well, which means they don't have any status in Cambodia, um, or they're from the hills where they're not recognized as being legal citizens. They have nowhere else to go, they have nothing else. And you get to a point where, I mean, that again was my question, is like, how can anybody sell a child? And, and I was surprised in this, and this is not by any means global, this was very specific, um, and I'm, I know it happens in other places, but, um, you know, I was told by the ladies, the people that work there, that um, people deliberately have children because it's an easy commodity. And that's, I mean, like I said, that's yeah. not Jeez. general. That's specific, yeah. but it does happen. It's, yeah. You're so poor, you're so poverty stricken. There's nothing, you have five other children and you can't feed them. You know, we'll never know what that's yeah. like. Yeah. And because of that, that, then I believe it's my obligation to make a difference to people who do know what it's like on a daily basis, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you deal with the f retribution? I mean, from the criminal organization. Organi yeah, sure. Oh, that's, that's so tough. Yeah, one. speaking yeah. Of, of partnering organizations, we actually don't do any of the prosecution work, but there have been uh, one of our partner organizations, uh, the International Justice Mission, has done a fabulous job at proving this point. You don't need to catch all the bad guys and prosecute all the bad guys to. Um, you know, make an impact and, and decrease uh, organized crime, specifically uh, child sexual exploitation in an area. Uh, they went in, did a few raids uh, with the local government there, prosecuted uh, some madams and some traffickers. Some of them got as many as 20 years. Of course, some people got paid off and some people got away, but at least some people got uh, prosecuted. And um, all the places that, uh, all the pedophile websites said, don't go back to this place, they're all gone. All the brothels with the little kids are gone. And so a lot of the places got shut down. And I think that's what's going to happen. We're going to see more and more um, you know, impact through uh, grassroots organizations, through uh, government agencies, and through rescue organizations. Mm -hmm. Prosecutions is a huge, huge, huge part of it. Care and their own society. And you're, you, uh, as part of what you're doing, uh, the ability, the capacity to, to monitor those steps, those achievements? Mm hmm Yeah. 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 Our, yeah um, it's a big part. It's a big part of the prevention, too, is yeah. to let, the, the more that we can make aware um, how effective this is being, it is like that red mm -hmm. flag to the trafficker of, like, somebody's watching us now. And in the way that, that the trafficker will use fear and coercion to subdue its victims, we can do the same mm -hmm. now to subdue the traffickers. The more we can achieve, the more we let them know the more you show that the people are involved. People are watching now, people, are, are, people know. And this is it, you know, we need to, every single person who watches mm -hmm. this and doesn't know mm -hmm. is now making a difference. If we have mm -hmm. the global shout, we can make it stop. Right. And, right. Um, yeah. And with, that's that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're definitely gonna wanna be a part of that somehow, yeah. if we can help you Thank with you. that, promote yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's an, I mean, it's a tremendous, uh, awesome task you guys have before you in, um, I can only be grateful and hope I can help in some small way, but um, I imagine with all said and done, there's also a tremendous amount of cost that's involved with this. And, and I know, you know, you do a lot of different things which we haven't had time and may not have time to get to everything today, but you know, we talked, you have uh, social economic development programs in, in high risk areas that I'm hoping we can take a 
30, 40 seconds and talk about uh, you have, you know, uh, you're, you're multiplying safe homes, mm -hmm. you're adding them uh, all over the place, and you're providing a voice for the victims, too, and you're also outreaching and spreading this word. And all this cost, mm -hmm. you know, this cost associated for it. Um, we do need a lot of money. Thankfully, uh, we're, we're public supported. We, we don't have a big government agencies with a bunch of red tape telling us what we can and can't do. Um, I'm a musician. I've done a lot of concerts over the years, raised a lot of money that way through my band Ten Shekel Shirt. And, um, and we've gotten connected with um, uh, great entities like GQ Magazine that have chosen us for the second year in a row to be a part of their Gentleman's Fund. Um, yeah, they listed you as one of the top five charities. Or yeah, 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 very yeah. good. Yeah. And um, and we've gotten some grants from some some people in the UK to build uh, um, some larger safe homes mm -hmm. in Southeast Asia. Uh, but we really, 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 to, to put it plainly, uh, there are some empty beds in our safe homes because we cannot afford to take more kids right now. Uh, and we've gotten calls saying, "Take more kids," and we can't. So we're down to the bare minimum we need people to uh, to give and they yeah. can do that on our website yeah you can find out more there ask more questions so it's like love146.org is the place to, mm -hmm. to start right now mm -hmm. and, and you using your music as well abigail yeah too? absolutely and and you know i'm a musician too and that's how i'm involved as as um part of the artist coalition we have an, a coalition of different artists and bands and musicians who are who feel this obligation to do more and um yeah, we have a public platform, we have a voice, we can reach multiple people at one time. Um, it's a sin not to do it. And so, yeah, yeah I, every time I do a show, it, um, or and it's all in all of my material. And I mean, I meet, because we travel a lot, we meet, we're privileged enough to meet lots of different people from lots of different backgrounds. We're able to, to highlight the issue to so many places where we mm -hmm. couldn't normally. So. Mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely using my music. So we're seeing that. some change in the short amount of time that your organization has been mm -hmm. really in existence. You, I think you're doing tremendous work, but you, there's also you're also seeing some tangible changes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. With the absolutely. wells and yeah. the safe homes and right. mm -hmm. the training for the care. All right. Yeah. So for those watching, if they're interested, mm -hmm. they should also know that anything at all that they can possibly do can be of valuable. Yeah. And go a long way. One yeah. thing that's been really effective up to now, we just implemented recently, was we, we started to, to run house parties where anyone can host a party in their own home, invite all the people that they know, present this to their friends and their family mm -hmm. as something that's important to them, and ask mm. that they all be involved. And um, that's proving to be really effective. That's a good um, idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And all that information's on our website. Yeah. Good. So you yeah. go on, yeah. you get party. all the information. Yeah. You can, yeah. You know, you, you get all the literature and DVDs, and if, if it's sizable enough, one of us will come and, and actually speak or perform at there as well. Mm -hmm. um, That's cool. Yeah, so I've done, <laughs> so I've done several, I've months done several, yeah. um, and they've been amazing. They've, it's, yeah. it's quite incredible to stand in a small room of people yeah. who are, you know, friends of friends, and just just to see it, the impact, just to um, you know, the domino effect of yeah. that impact. Do you get a lot? I noticed, like on your MySpace um, presentation, you have a lot of bands. Are they doing the same thing? Are they helping in that yeah, way, very performing? Much. And that's great. There's a lot of slavery uh, still in our world today. We need to uh, fight it. So people need to learn. Then they need to join something. Then they need to act. And act. Give money. Join the abolition. Rock on. Be an ab ab abolitionist. Love146.org. Thank you for watching Soapbox. I'm Mauro Di Pasquale. I look forward to seeing you on WCCA TV 13, the People's Channel. Thanks, guys. Yes. Yes.